All right, Coach Collins. Uh, do you want to be called Coach Collins, Stacy? Any preference? You can call me anything, my man. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, first, just kind of going way back, uh, what initially drew you into football? What made you start playing and what what made you love football? Well, you know, I, I grew up in a small town in Southern, Southern Oregon, um, in Southern Oregon area down there, the town's named Sutherland. And so, you know, that's what you did, man. We played football on the street. We grew up on the street playing. You know, it was a different, different world back then. You know, there was very little cable. You, you watch, you know, you watch big time football. It's part of when I started first started watching Penn State football on your TV. You, you, you stood up and turned the channel with your hand. And that's what I did my whole career. And then going into my high school and college, I knew I wanted to be a high school teacher and coach. That's what I wanted to do. So, you know, played football through my junior high and, and high school, went to Western Oregon University, which is a heavy education school out in the state of Oregon. Um, did my undergraduate, my graduate work in, in education. So as I was student teaching, at Sheldon High School in Eugene. I got the opportunity to do a graduate assistantship at Western Oregon, fell in love with the college game, the ability to change, you know, change young men to be able to develop and grow with them, create those relationships. And so that's really what got me into it. Sure, you kind of already answered my next question. You know, uh, what, when did it kind of hit that you knew that you wanted to be a college coach long term? Yeah, I think that's when I was actually in the in the GA side of it, you know, with graduate assistant. I, I really knew I wanted to be a high school teacher and coach. And then when I was able to get into the college side of it, you know, a little bit more in depth with recruiting, with the schematics, that was very, very attractive to me. Um, I'm just kind of going into your journey a little bit. You already mentioned the Western Oregon stop. Then you went a little different route. You went uh, to Europe, I believe, the Vienna Vikings. What was that kind of transition like and what drew you out there? Well, I was able to get the job, which was first, you know, I, I was fortunate that guy from UCLA turned it down, guy from New Mexico turned it down. So I happened to be the last one standing on that one. But it worked out great. It was it, it was an unbelievable football experience, but more importantly, a, a life experience. You know, I grew up in a small town, Southern Oregon. Western Oregon's a small college. I'd never really left the state. So for me, the development as a person was huge. To go overseas, be somewhere. You don't speak the language. You're on, you're on the subway. You're on the tram in a major city. Uh, that was awesome for me to grow and develop, get get me out of my comfort zone. I was fortunate enough to be with the Vienna Vikings, which are one of the premier programs in Europe. And so we had an unbelievable run because we had great players and a great organization. So that life experience was huge for me. And then from there, you uh, actually made, it, made your way here for the first stop. Um, what kind of initially drew you to South Dakota Mines that first time? You know, it, it was a, it was a defensive coordinator job at that time. Um, I'd been a restricted earnings guy at Western Oregon, so this was my first full-time job, and I didn't know a ton about it. Darren Susie was the head coach. I'd worked a camp in Alaska where a lot of small college coaches would work, and so it was the opportunity to come out there, and I didn't know a ton about Rapid City. I certainly didn't know a ton about Black Hills, but once you're in that region, it, it's a pretty easy region to fall in love with. It's an awesome place. Sure. Uh, from there, Western Washington, and then you got an opportunity at your first uh, D1 gig would have been Idaho State. Were there any major differences right away being a D2 guy and jumping up to the FCS level at that time? Well, there were certainly some differences. Now, Western Washington was a premier Division II program when I was out there. I mean, it, it, we were we had some really good players. In fact, I had two NFL specialists that played, you know, on – you know, double digit years in there. Um, so there was some changes. I think certainly anytime you change, probably the biggest changes is how you recruit. And so Idaho State coach, coach Larry Lewis was there. I worked with a lot of different coaches at that time. In fact, coach Franklin had been through Idaho State before I was there. We never worked together, but I would say the recruiting was probably the biggest change, which was great. Um, then from there, he stops again back at Oregon, back in Washington, uh, Portland State, another FCS job. And then you came here as the head coach. Was when did it kind of start to hit you that maybe maybe you wanted to jump up and be a head coach? Yeah, you know, I think as I got going through the coaching profession, that became one of my goals. And you know, it was kind of a unique story with South Dakota School of Mines is we were at Central Washington. We we're a really good football team in Central Washington, 2009. I think we finished second or third in the nation. Um, lost to North Miss Missouri by a point deep in the playoffs. But we had taken a trip. We played Colorado Mesa on uh, on a Saturday, late Saturday night. We actually 
were playing Duluth on a Thursday night back then ESPN would do a division two game a week. And I think they're the number one team in the nation, whatever it may be, but we stopped and practiced. We didn't, you know, central Washington wasn't school. So we actually just went up to Duluth from there, stopped and practiced two days in, in rapid city. And so much had changed from the field to, you know, the, just the facilities. And I was like, man, if this thing ever opens, I'm like, you know, this is a job I'd love to get back. Always love the area, love the region. And then down the road, I'd taken the job at Portland state as the special teams coordinator assistant head coach. And when that, that job opened in rapid city, I was fortunate enough to get in the mix. Dick guys are hired me and it, that's how I ended up out there. Sure. Uh, what you kind of mentioned a little bit of this, but what are obviously the first time you were here was the NAIA school, then it had changed. You were kind of here during the transition to D2. What were the main differences maybe in the program or the athletic department as a whole? Well, so much of it was the vision of it. You know, when I was there the first time, it wasn't any AI program. It was not, not that there, there's a lot of damn good NEI programs out there, but it, the resources would, would, would really change. You know, the commitment from the administration to do that. Um, you know, we we're fighting to get in the league. We we're Division II independent initially when we got in there and then got into the GNAC conference. But it was just the overall resources from the full time coaches we had to the scholarship allotment that we had to the facilities we had. Sure. Obviously, you've been doing this a while, about 25 years. Um, just do you just want to talk a little bit about maybe how your goals have shifted from when you first started coaching to maybe 10 years in and maybe even now? What are your goals are now? Sure. Well, I think, you know, early on as, as I was rolling through it, I wanted to be a head coach, you know, so I took as many jobs as I could to prepare myself for that. Got that opportunity to do that out in Rapid City. And, you know, then you realize as a head coach, there's a lot of great things about it, but then you start losing some of the reasons you got in the game. You weren't around. I wasn't around. I wasn't coaching football as much. I wasn't around the kids as much. You, you, you become a CEO of a small business at that time. You're making a million decisions. So when I got the opportunity to go to Utah state, as a special teams coordinator out there, it kind of got me back into why I got into it. And I, and I love the head coaching place. I, I really did not have plans to leave South Dakota. The Utah State opportunity was a great one. But it also opened my eyes a little bit what it's like to be an assistant to, to you know, handle your players, recruit your room, and, and do that. So right now, my goal is every day to be the best we can be to have the best damn special teams meeting we can have today, to have the best work winter workout we can have tomorrow. And I think in college football, if you don't have that mindset, I know that sounds like coach speak, but that's what over time stacking those days is what makes everything successful. Sure. You know, uh, early on, you laid a lot of the groundwork for, you know, what the program is kind of doing at now in that transition. You had a couple winning seasons, a bunch of single season school records, um, how much of that, you know, first, I guess, how much do you follow this program now? And then do you have any connections with any of the current coaching staff, former student athletes? Yeah, well, I, I, I still do follow my chance to see Coach Floor down at the uh... – at the National Coaches Convention. Austin Stevens, who your O-line coach is, was a GA force, at, you know, played for us, and then was a graduate assistant for us at Utah State. So uh, I want nothing but success for the Hard Rockers. I mean, that's an, um, I want, you know, still stay in contact with coach, with Joel Lucan and, and that crew. So, you know, Heather Wilson was the president there when I was towards the end of it, and I still stay in contact with Heather. I thought she did an unbelievable job as a leader and a president of that university. So, um, yeah, I, mean, I, I, I stay, I try to stay abreast as much as I can. Sure. What are some of your uh, most fond memories of your time, either of your stops here? Yeah, I think the biggest, you know, biggest thing in my memories was just the transition that took place the four years we were there. I mean, we had just jumped into Division Two when I got hired, and to be honest with you, it was a challenge. I mean, we were we were behind in a lot of ways, and uh, that is a process. And sometimes, you know you want that process to always go faster than it is, you know? Um, but I look at how we develop those young men. I look at the staff we were able to bring in where those guys are at now. Um, you know, certainly we had some success on the field, which was what we're all reaching for, but you know, the, the amount of those guys that are, have made it in life, and especially walking out with a degree from that place is unbelievable. I mean, and we knew that, and there was, you know, there's guys that were on that fringe that, hey, do we take this guy? Do we not? They're, they walked out of here with degrees because we're able to give them a system to give them a path to do that. Who've been extremely successful. So proud of how we got that program working in the right direction. We're able, you know, just like anything, you want to leave it better than you found it. Uh, it was a lot of hard work by a lot of people, um, but I'm probably, if not more proud, just the, the, the type of young men we're able to develop and watch what they've done walking out of South Dakota months. Sure. And how much did that help you and, you know, your personal and just professional growth as a coach? 
Well, it helps you immensely. And for us, it was great because we truly had to, you know, we had to recruit nationally. That, that was great. You know, they're just, you'd like to take as many South Dakota kids as you can, but when you look at the population base and then you look at the degree, you know, in that time, it was really all engineering. There wasn't, you know, wasn't a lot of other options. So it was good for us. We got out, we recruit nationally. That helped us all expand. It helped us grow. You, you find ways when you're in those situations to, to get better. And South Dakota's mind certainly did that for me all the way around as a football coach, as a person, as a father. Sure. If, uh, from here, you uh, mentioned you already wound up at uh, Utah State. You were there five years. Uh, you had some pretty good success there. Some of the uh, Gary Anderson, one of the you know most winningest coaches they've had there. So uh, how important was that success to you? And just what were your favorite things about being in U being at Utah State? Oh, Utah State's a great place. You know, I mean, I was there to be able to be there five years. My oldest daughter was able to start high school there and finish there. Um, I was able, Matt Wells hired me initially, and we you know, went through and had the two, 2018 season where we were 11 and two, unbelievable run. And then the opportunity to stay on and work with Coach Anderson was great. So, work with a lot of great coaches. I'm, I'm very, very fond of Logan, Utah. We're able to put a great product on the field. It's an unbelievable, it's a unique atmosphere there. Just, you know, it's a small college town, and but awesome, awesome kids, awesome place. And like I said, you know, we, we spent in four years in Rapid City, then be able to spend five years in Logan, Utah was great. Yeah, and then you spent the one year at Boise State. Um, I believe that was probably just a product of the coaching change at Utah State. Um, what brought you to Boise? And, you know, obviously limited time there, but how did that kind of propel you into the job you're at now? Well, Boise State's one of those unique places, right? The tradition of of the blue, tradition of success. So the opportunity to go work at Boise um, was, was great. It's an unbelievable city. It's an unbelievable place, unbelievable people. Standards there are extremely high, which is awesome to work in, to be around every day. And I can't say enough of great things about the opportunity Coach Avalos gave me out there. Yeah, and uh, just looking back, you know, do you ever, you know, a lot of, a lot of the coaches that wind up at big time D1, obviously not every coach, but a lot of them, you know, GA D1, they play D1 and then they get a D1 coaching job. You took a, obviously a very different route where you definitely paid your dues, been doing it for 20 plus years. Do you ever just look back and reflect on, wow, I'm at, I'm at Penn State? Yeah, I think you look back at it and you learn from the lessons, but you know, I'll tell you what, when I played for the home stake trophy, that was just important was when we walked out against Oklahoma State and Boise. And that amounts that might sound crazy, but it wasn't. I mean, it, it's that process. It's that process. And, and at the end of the day, coaching is coaching, teaches is teaching. I'm, my background's in education. There's guys who can and there's guys who can't. So we were certainly trying to find a way, whatever that was, both on and off the field to grow, grow and develop our guys. Well, um, at South Dakota and at South Dakota Mines, and we're doing the same thing here at Penn State. And I know there's there is some differences, certainly from resources, certainly from certainly who you're recruiting, but it's about relationships. It's about being able to develop people both on and off the field, and quite frankly, continue to make yourself better. So you can sit back and 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 look at that a little bit, which I think you have to do at times. But you better put your nose through the grind and, and have a great day every day, because if not, this business will get you take up too much of your time here coach that's all the questions i have for you today thank you so much for your time no problem you have a good one